children in cages and boys behind bars and women holding scars in their skin. All my ancestors water streams. Sometimes I feel far removed and wake up in heavy chains. No pendant, dependent on lens you look in the fact remains. I bathed with bleach, hoping the black washed in the sink. God was white and heaven is where I had to reach. Kara Kirkshank, welcome to Essential Stories, an independent grassroots docuseries and live roundtable discussions that give voice to people on the front lines of our world's most pressing social issues. We're going to begin this roundtable uh, with three spoken word artists um, that I'm very excited to introduce to you. They are going to help set the space for this conversation. And tonight's topic is how do we create a new reality beyond racism? And again, I'm your host, Kara Kirkshank. This is Essential Stories. And uh, to begin with, I'd like to introduce our first spoken word artist, Miles Ananda. Miles uh, is LA born and LA-based. He's a creative with a vision that wears many hats. Originally a conscious rapper with a passion for mental and spiritual health, Miles has since expanded his creative horizons, including producing, writing, scoring, directing, and more. He knows no limits and uses his APOTS, did I say it right? APOTS. Agency as the umbrella to lead by example as an advocate for personal development and authentic expression of all sorts. Miles has most recently embraced his voice and influence to include activism, organizing and facilitating dialogues of multiracial and multi-generational speakers to spread awareness and activate audiences. Um, thank you for the intro. Thank you for the invitation and the consideration. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get straight into my poem, but I wanna just say, I, like you said, I'm you know, embracing that it's gonna take energy and you know acting of many sorts so whether that's using my you know initial passion of writing poetry or you know coming together with you know groups like this to speak and putting out you know other content it's all hands on deck and everybody has to do what they can so with that being said this piece was written like a week and a half ago and it's called about time so can everybody hear me we good all right cool says, I'm my ancestor's water stream. Sometimes I feel far removed and wake up in heavy chains. No pendant, dependent on lens you look in, the fact remains. From cotton to cutting, a record deal for a shackled brain. Whip with a sack of change, whip with a classic frame. Black women that master claims should shake all their ass for fame. Industry plantation that's built on the back of blacks and back to back nights of a cold white nightmare. I woke up to the same devil right there. Police on his high horse. He killing black babies broad day without a fight. Yeah, if you think this plight fair, you should check your sight cause it ain't even slightly. They don't get indictments. We gonna get a life sentence cause a third strike. Something like a bike. Niggas too tired. I think it's time to strike back. Overload his psyche. All these black killings in our faces and memories that never get erased. I taste blood from Confederate states. Dark skin that these predators hate. I confess I second guess if it will ever give way, then pick my head up, stop thinking in a negative way. I'll admit that it is better today. I better be grateful. I better behave, but I better be brave. My energy strong, my legacy waits, and with every song I tell them, now the revolution getting televised. They can't control it, so combat it. Yeah, they telling lies. Fear been getting weaponized. They dog whistle war with words that they emphasize. 
and people claiming that they empathize, but that ain't enough. Cause when shit get cracking, is you rolling or you set the high? Step aside if all you do is talk, just to talk, and you never ride. I see it in your eyes, shooting out the crevices as cold black realness. Scabs ripping off, sixty years ain't heal shit. Dogs, hoses, liquid coming from our noses. We still sick. It's looking like George was the kill switch. The system down, not at all, but that's wishful thinking. Like, let me dream real quick. It's like I seen that a little bit. It's like I seen it. A tiny bright light, super far, far away. Tunnel vision, get these balls off and fight for the day. Where the land I was born is right for a child. I write in these pages. I show you where my heart's at. Chin up as I chip in about time that we fought back. Chip away at change about time that we brought that. Because they've been running game. It's about time that we caught that. It can't be the same. It's about time. Chin up as I chip in about time that we fought back. Chip away at change, it's about time that we brought that, cause they've been running game, about time that we caught that. Yeah, it's about time. Thank you. Miles and not. Peace. Thanks, Miles. That's such a strong piece. And a good way to kick off this conversation. Thank you. I'm excited. Shout out to everybody who's speaking. Jelani or Ravina, let's get it. So next, I would like to introduce Jelani Iman. Jelani is a homegrown LA talent that has a lot to share and different styles he covers. He is working with youth to expose them to art and its importance to the community. Jelani's mission is to provide a community space for at-risk youth to make art in a constructive way. Man, that that piece, like, man, that last piece was as good as hell. I'm not gonna lie. Um, man, um, so I just, so I got this uh, poem that I wrote. I would just say it's a, it's a piece that I'm just gonna, it's better to say it than to explain it. This one's called The Nigger and the Coon. I was a coon, a baboon consumed by hatred. Skin, skin seemed too dark to bloom. I bathed with bleach, hoping the black washed in the sink. God was white, and heaven is where I had to reach. I was a nigger. I needed pussy in the ass to grab and smash. A little cash, a bit of hash. I'm always in a dash. Cause 12 send us to the pen fast if you ain't dead from this ghetto and all it has to have. I was an African. I got taken and traded. My tongue was lost. I drowned in white faces. And now I'm a black man. I'm so copied and embraced. I prayed for grace. Saw my face and gazed at perfection in every single way. America always knew they saw perfection too. So they called me a nigga and set me up as a coon. That's Strong piece. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And you wrote this this past week, right? Yes. Um, it's like when I think about that, I think about the sense of um, it was it was pointing to what you said um, in the beginning of the meeting of, of like self love. And like, that's like, that's what I feel like um, is gonna fix. Well, I feel like economics is really gonna fix like the way that uh, this whole thing is working, because I feel like if we put more money into these the, the area in the ghetto that things uh the way that your perception of yourself and the way that you love yourself will be a lot better because you won't have to worry about i gotta get groceries or shit i gotta feed my kids it's like i think economics but um, if you don't have the economics like first thing i would say is self-love yes and we're gonna get deep into that tonight thank you delani Next, I would like to introduce Ravina, and please tell me if I don't pronounce this right, 
Wadwani. Uh, Ravina is a Los Angeles-based mental health therapist currently serving at a community-based nonprofit where she provides culturally and linguistically specific mental health services to the South Asian community. She also actively facilitates healing circles for survivors of gender-based violence, women of color, and folks with mental illness and or their families. Ravina actively raises education and awareness of culturally specific issues in an effort to destigmatize mental health and increase access to resources. Ravina has worked predominantly with families and individuals of color and marginalized identities in settings such as hospitals, community-based organizations, nonprofits, public schools, universities, and women's prisons in various places, including her home in the US. Virgin, Virgin Islands, as well as the United Kingdom, Massachusetts, and California. So Ravina, did I say your last name properly? You got it, that was perfect. Okay, good. Welcome and please take the mic. Thank you for having me, Kara. And thank you to everyone who's tuning in. Um, shout out to Miles and Jelani for those pieces. They're so necessary. Um, so I'll just kind of get into it. I wrote this piece. I just was uh, taken aback by the images of the children in ICE detention cages. And so I wrote this after that. So it's called, This Country is Caging Our Children. There are children in cages. There are children in cages. There are children in cages. It is 2019 and there are children in cages. Children in cages and boys behind bars and women holding scars in their skin. Kids in detention instead of meditation. Numbers assigned to lives, shrinking them down to digits. School courtyards that look more like prisons than playgrounds. Children in cages and foil blankets for warmth and cement floors for beds. Newborns ripped from their mothers in the honor of red and blue. Tell me why all I can see is red and all I can feel is blue. In this country, we are feeding our children competition instead of consciousness. We shove whitewashed curriculums down the throats of brown students once sitting in chairs that you and I once sat in. Makes me think, how much white did I need to wash out of my own system to embrace the brown that seeped through the cracks yearning to be loved? How much talent did we standardize in the name of admittances to Ivy League institutions that would rather give us a seat without letting us speak than to feed us what we crave and see us fly? They tell America to celebrate by setting off fireworks of red and blue, run sirens across hoods, shining lights of red and blue, split people into half, ask them to be loyal to red and blue, crippling bodies with blood dripping down, wounded legs and wars to protect red and blue. America must be hot and cold at the same time. America tells my students to cut themselves into pieces that are digestible enough tells them they are not enough before telling them they are too much. She cuts locks, bans hijabs, stops the student who is falling asleep in the front row, gives him a number, puts him in detention to become yet another statistic. My children are locked in a system that will tell them how to sit, how to stop spreading their wings when wings were meant to soar. It's that piece. Each of these deserves a breather after. Thank you. Is there anything that you want to add about that piece? Um, yeah, I just, I feel like, you know, I think so much about how, you know, I think about school to prison. I think about immigration and detention centers and just these systems that are pressing on the youngest of us, right? The youngest of the children that are sitting in the seats. And I reflect back on my own journey as a young child and having to go through an education system that didn't have people that looked like me or didn't necessarily have uh, 
folks at the front lines who looked at me are giving seats to tables to people of color and um, and just pushing and pushing. And so that picture of the children in the cages really um, triggered me. And I just like, they're, they're babies, you know, and there are our, our babies in our future. And so I think about like the youngest of the young a lot. And so that piece came from that. Thank you, Ravina. So that sets the space for our panel discussion. Thank you all for your original pieces tonight and for sharing them with our public um, as well as with each other. Like, share, and subscribe so that we can make sure that these essential stories are heard by more people.